Hey, it's Dan, welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly, and uh, I've got a very good one for you today. And for my friends in the UK, having tea. A lot of you say that when my videos come out, it's time for tea. So I decided to join you today. So I'm having tea along with my friends in the UK. Uh, there is so much to talk about with the Fed chairman speaking, the one and only Jamie Dimon speaking, and again, two days in a row, we get so lucky. Um, but before I get into it, please take a second, please hit the like button, subscribe button, join the email list, it's in the video description, and plus if you'd like to get more access to me, you've got the uh, Patreon account that you can join. And uh, I am in Dana Point, California today. This is a park that is right next to the Ritz-Carlton and uh, all these really expensive homes. And on this beautiful January day, people are out here just enjoying the sun and just, it's beautiful out here. You can't, can't get over how nice it is. Uh, the Fed chairman, let's talk about him first. Uh, you know, he is going up to Congress right now and he is trying to get uh, his second term as the uh, chairman of the Fed. So he has to sit in front of Congress and take their questions. And one thing that he said today, uh, which was outrageous, was he said that there is no need for additional stimulus, for aggressive stimulus, that the economy is doing so well, we just don't need it anymore right now. Okay, there's that. Uh, again, uh, they're going to taper, they're going to slow it down, there's just no need for this money. But we just were told that there's $10 billion that could be sent over to small businesses and tied to small businesses uh, to help revitalize the problems that they have. Next thing, by the way, look at this, guys. It's just so beautiful. It overlooks the really famous surfing spot down here. and You've got the beautiful hotel right there. Okay, that's just nice. Okay, just no two ways about it. Uh, the one and only Jamie Dimon, uh, he is at the J.P. Morgan Health Conference. Now, to give you guys an idea, I was in the medical space running co medical conferences full time. And uh, one thing I would do every January was I would go to uh, the J.P. Morgan conference. And it was something that was just absolutely fantastic. And uh, I would get so much out of it, go to San Francisco. You don't go to the J.P. Morgan conference. Uh, very few people I ever met actually got invited to that thing. You would go to the surrounding conferences that were around uh, J.P. Morgan. And it was just, it was biotech conferences, startup conferences, mixers, uh, to give you an idea, the last time I went uh, with my friend Rand and I, we would go to have meetings all day long, and then we would have cocktail parties. We went to seven cocktail parties every night we were there, on average, and it was just crazy. We, we would have start with stacks of business cards in a day, get down to nothing, and we would just meet so many people. But the one thing I would do is, JP Morgan was always two weeks before I had my MedTech Monday conferences, and I would always go there, and I would always leave two or three startup spots available for my conference to where these people could come speak. So it was great. So anyways, it progressively got worse. San Francisco, that is, got worse every year. The last time I was there was in January of 2020. Now, the health crisis just started. China was having big problems. Australia was having those massive fires then so we had all these problems then and it was just a real real weird year okay but the crime the violence the people defecating in the street was just crazy when you see this one night the last night we were there there were two gentlemen that uh, were having an M80 fight where they were throwing quarter sticks of dynamite across the street at each other to settle some type of score because they were mad about something with each other and the cops did nothing, okay? A woman, you know, you walk to a lot of places with this, you know, big groups, you know, you walk from this event to that event and we're walking down the street and this one woman decided to take it upon herself to uh, yell at these guys and I'm just, you know, I'm gonna give her a name. Let's call her Chubbs. Chubbs decided to take it on her own to yell at these two guys to say, hey, knock it off. We're gonna call the cops on you. And they proceeded to throw M80s at her. Boom, boom. The cops show up and the cops suggestion, which I then step in and say, hey, you should arrest these guys. And they say, no, you should get out of here so you don't get hurt. That was their suggestion to me, okay? So I said, I am never coming back to this hellhole ever again. 
and that was the last time, and will probably be the last time ever in San Francisco. So again, lunacy, crazy. And I've also told this story before, that I had just left the Ritz-Carlton and uh, was at the Ernst & Young big event that they have. Now this was a huge conference where they would talk about different, uh, you know, where the economy's going, where the money was spent, where investment's gonna go for startups in the coming year, it was really cool. But it was at the Ritz Carlton. So guys, the food is insane in San Francisco. I mean, oh, you want a Voss water? They had Voss waters that were, you know, that made this Starbucks cup look small. And uh, probably 25 bucks a piece. Oh, grab, grab a couple, Dan, take them with you, okay? Just amazing food, food stations, everything. So I, we're leaving this place and we decide before our next meetings, we're walking to, from that hotel to another place that we go into a liquor store and the liquor store we walk into and uh, some guy walks in behind us and says hello to me and then proceeds to stuff his pockets with candy chips and Cokes and then jumps over the barrier and takes off. And I go to the guy running the place. I'm like, oh my God, he's not with me, okay? And they, oh yeah, we know, just go ahead. So we proceeded to walk up to the register and pay for our merchandise before we left the store. But that's San Francisco. And right now the JP Morgan conference is going on and Jamie Dimon himself is speaking. Now remember, yesterday he said it was the best economy in four decades. Sorry for the long stories, guy. But best economy in four decades from this guy. Okay, well today he says, uh, uh, wages are a huge problem. And if we have wages running out of control, wait a second, people are getting paid more and inflation's going up and they're not really getting paid that much and it's great. No, but wages could go out of control now. We need to be concerned about that and we need to be concerned about potential 15% unemployment. Where is this coming from? Yesterday it was the greatest economy on the planet Earth, four decades of uh, growth, and now we're supposed to be told that, uh, that everything's crazy and that uh, we could have four decades of, uh, of uh, here's to my friends in the UK. Mm. We're told that uh, wages could run out of control. Again, there is nothing that we are being told, nothing in the business community that makes sense. You need to make sense of things yourself, whether it's channels like this that tell you what's going on or your own life, okay? You, you have to get a grip on what's going on for your own financial household. It's that simple. We were just told from CNBC, and this leads to today, okay? I had a breakfast meeting with somebody, had a lunch meeting with somebody, but the breakfast meeting, you know, legal strategy, different things for my business, different things for us, social media company we're working on, all this stuff, cool stuff, and just exciting. Then I go to lunch with a marketer friend of mine who proceeds to tell me how unhappy he is with his financial life and that he's just not doing what he wants to do. And I, and again, this guy is rich. This guy has no bills. He doesn't know anybody anything. Doesn't have any kids, okay? That's to his detriment. I love my children. But he doesn't have the responsibility or financial responsibility of children. He doesn't have a car payment. He's got rent, okay? And that's it. And uh, Jeff, some, I have some money in the bank. Yeah, Dan, I don't have a car payment. Well, you're rich, guy. Go do what you want to do. Because you don't have it today, that's not the strategy, guys. You need to rebuild the strategy to make your life successful and grab a hold of it. And it, if you're going to make a job change, I had someone reach out to me today via text saying that they're thinking, she's thinking about making a job change. Do it. Do it. Don't quit your job without having another job, but do what you want to do. Life is a one lap race. You need to be happy doing what you're doing. And again, I've had a thousand jobs that I haven't been happy doing. And it doesn't mean that you have to choose the perfect job, but choose opportunities, choose what you want to do, and don't do anything stupid. CNBC today just did an article that's attached in the video description below talking about the average person's household debt. And this is staggering, this is sickening, and it is flooring, it will floor you. Here in the America, they say that the average family uh, has $155,000 worth of personal debt between cars and credit cards. What is wrong with you people? Seriously, do you have that? What, what, what are you, who do you, who are you trying to impress, okay? You think these people on this beach care what you drive or what you wear, okay? No one cares, no one cares at all. 
what your financial situation looks like or the car or your clothes or anything like that, guys. They just don't. They just don't care right now. You've got to get control of this. And again, right now, you're going to hear some stories today about cars and where the car market's going to go. But right now, people are paying more for cars than ever before. Think about this one. People that lease cars. And again, people here in California get a lot of 24-month car leases. Uh, rent a car for two years, pay for it, bring it back. Normally, you're, you're upside down. Normally, you got a fee. You know, hey, those tires look pretty uh, worn. Oh, where's that scratch from? We're going to charge you for that. And they, they scrutinize the car. Right now, if you have a lease, the average person is making almost $10,000 turning their leased car in. And if you're just turning it in, not saying anything, or not trying to negotiate with these people, they are selling these cars for more than you paid for the lease. So you need to go in there and you need to work something out with these car people because I love car people, okay? But they would, you know, if the deal suits them better than it suits you, yeah, okay. Anyways. You can go out and you can get, turn your leased vehicle in right now and get money. If you have a family member or that idiot cousin of yours, he did what? He leased a BMW for how much? What a fool. That fool can make money on that car right now if he made his payments. Okay? So make sure you tell your friends that. But again, Jerome Powell, you know, we're being told one thing and another thing is happening. Yesterday, it is the greatest economy in four decades. Four decades. And now we're being told that uh, uh, he's really concerned about wages. Now, next thing, Bank of America. Why is it that banks are slashing uh, fees right now? Economy's so good, they're slashing fees. The last time we saw them do something like that was during the health crisis when it first started and they issued the first stimulus check. One thing that, that banks did was if people were overdrawn, they were upside down, they had problems, you could deposit your stimulus check in your bank and it would not affect the overdraft. In other words, if somebody was upside down 400 bucks for bank fees, they wrote checks, they swiped the card thinking they were gonna have money and they don't, they weren't getting penalized for this. So you could put your stimulus check in and they would give you full credit on that. Right now, Bank of America and other banks, I'll get the list as they come out, are announcing that they're slashing overdraft fees. Why are they doing that? Okay, you're gonna go from $35 to $10 to give people a break. Well, what do you need to give people a break for if things are going so well? It doesn't make an ounce of sense that things are so fantastic and you're giving these people this break, okay? Just a flat beach, just beautiful out here. So, share your thoughts on this. And again, Jamie Dimon, you know what? I. I I love billionaires. I love really rich people. You can learn a tremendous amount from them. But also, some of these people don't understand what the average person is going through. Regardless of whatever planet you're on and you're watching this video, whether you live in the United States, the UK, Spain, South America, it doesn't matter. You know, Scotland, all the cool pla uh, places that reached out in the last couple days, you know, it doesn't make a bit of difference. But these fat cats don't care about us on average that's what we're seeing so share your thoughts on this i really want to know what you think and uh take a look at this the little restaurant down here is closed right now zach's is done i'm gonna park myself here and drink my tea but uh share your thoughts guys i really want to know what you think about all this stuff it's nice to sit in the shade get away from everybody have a nice drink and uh, Zach's this place right here is uh, really popular during spring and summer months but uh, keep the theme of banking and talk about that a little more and money uh, it is anticipated that the Americans owe 15.24 trillion dollars in consumer debt the highest it's ever been it also has gone up 6.7 percent from a year ago Okay. Now, here's the staggering part. We had more savings a year ago than we have ever had. And now the savings is gone. And people are dipping into their credit. 
and they anticipate that this number is only going to grow on a monthly basis. And again, people are using their consumer credit to live, to finance their lives, to pay their electric bill, to pay the gas bill in their house. And again, not everybody has you know, a 70 degree day that they're sitting out in, and I understand that, but it, it's terrible that people have to live this way. So, Kathy Wood uh, also came out and she said that the car market is going to get destroyed and that more people need to uh, understand that they're going to overpay for cars and they shouldn't buy the cars right now. So again, you need to make the decision right now. Look at your personal finances. Look at that leased vehicle. Look at the cars that you can get rid of. Even if you own a car and you finance it, you know, you know, don't kid yourself. You know that when you walked in the dealership, you owned that Audi that you were upside down $12,000 and you had them pack it in and the payment's this high because you were stupid and you never paid the Audi off, okay? Now's your chance that you could finally get rid of that car and get out from under it. Now, the ultimate dream would be to get out of it and get some money, but the other thing would be out of it and get out of that payment that you, don't, that you can't afford and that you don't need right now. So that's what you need to look at right now and how you can fix your finances right now and, and get out of these ridiculous car payments. And again, lease payments, things like that that people have been stuck with. There's a lot of windfalls out there right now from uh, leasing cars and people that are getting plus uh, from that, uh, being made whole and getting uh, positive money out of that. The next thing is the mortgage industry. And again, they're not the most scrupulous group of people and I know that they're gonna freak out but the mortgage industry is now having a new campaign where they're saying you better get in now you better go out and you better get a home loan now while you can afford it and while rates are down because you're going to miss out that fear of missing out FOMO oh my gosh you need to go buy that house that's four hundred thousand dollars more than it's supposed to be and you need to go get that payment because the interest rates gonna get low now Get a calculator, go get an app on finance, and they're free, you know, app stores got them for free, and you can play games with yourself that if you bought a house, some guy sent me a house in Texas today, 468,000, and said that it was $150,000 more than it was a year ago. Okay, that's insane. So look at the payment, that if it dropped down 150 grand, and the interest rates went up two points, how bad off would you be? Seriously, okay? So if you paid 150 grand less and financed that over the debacle of paying too much, and by the way, if you buy the house for $150,000 more, $168,000 to be exact, more than your neighbor did, and you try to sell it, you won't be able to sell it. So you're gonna be stuck with that for a very long time. I don't think that we're going to see housing prices like this for the rest of our lives. I think that they're going. this is an all-time high and that for my life, let's put it that way, because I'm an old man, okay? But that being said, I think that's what you've got to look forward to. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. Do the math and all this stuff. And again, do some research on your own life. Do some research on your own finances because you can get out of this stuff. And right now, there's crazy things going on. What do you owe right now? How much money do you have on that car, on the credit card bills, on things that are asset-oriented, that it, whether it be a jet ski, the golf cart, things like that, People are paying top dollar still for that stuff right now. And I don't think they will in six months. I think six months from now, you're not gonna be able to give that stuff away. So share your thoughts and all this stuff. Let me know what you think, okay? It's very interesting now that we're hearing from the grocery store chains talking about the supply chain problems. And uh, Vivek uh, Sankaran, who is the CEO of Albertsons, on their earnings call, and you know, uh, Albertsons, Safeway, uh, one other one, Vons, got clobbered with their earnings uh, this week. And uh, they're blaming the uh, uh, problems with not having merchandise in the shelves with employees. Okay? It has nothing to do with the supply chain. It has nothing to do with that. They're saying it's an employee issue. And again, guys, this is this is crazy. You didn't anticipate this. You didn't anticipate that there would be uh, problems with people stocking shelves. You really think that when we walk into a store right now and we don't see bread on a shelf or milk or Tocitos or Doritos or anything like that, that we blame it on uh, you guys don't have enough workers. That's, you guys are delusional. And again, 
what is the point of lying about this stuff? Okay? There's no lifeguard on duty, guys, so don't go swimming. Okay? I'm gonna have a seat on the lifeguard house here. But again, who believes that? I don't. I don't believe it at all. And the other thing is, they're doing a real uh, a push to get rid of student loan debt. And I don't think this is fair, okay? Um, I'm gonna give you an example. There's a woman named Patricia Rizzo who went out for her daughter and borrowed on a, um, a plus loan. It's the uh, student loan plus loan and she borrowed $126,000, okay? And her daughter got a job for 40 grand a year and Patricia thinks that she will, she's in her late 50s and that she will be, she can't retire, okay? And that she will be 82 by the time she pays the loan off, okay? Well, I'm sorry, okay? I really am and it's, it's, it's terrible that these people went out and got these Parents Plus loans and did this. Now, they did a survey and there's another story where they interviewed all these people that got these Parental Plus loans that the parents took out the loans, not the students. And is it delaying your retirement? 26% of them said it's delaying their retirement uh, because their kids got these loans. Uh, there's one man that I spoke about three months ago that he borrowed money for five of his kids. He owes $500,000. He pays almost five grand a month in bills for this. And he said it was his obligation to do this. And again, okay, is it? Is it really? But. There are stories right now where they're trying to say, look, the economy's doing great without student loan payments. We need to get rid of these student loan payments. This is gonna be the most unfair thing ever if they just dismiss these student loan payments. So I really want you guys to share your thoughts on this because I don't have student loan debt, okay? And uh, I think it's outrageous that they just wanna give this up and dismiss it and wave a wand. You people that paid your student loan debt should be furious. I demand a refund is what you should do. So share your thoughts on this, uh, on what you think about this. And also, do you believe that Albertsons uh, has less merchandise on the shelves because of employees? Who, who, who sits there and, and, and for a second would believe that right now? The supply chain issue. Now, guys, I am really south right now today. And in Dana Point, this is, you know, Dana Point, um, and then it goes San Clemente, and then you've got San Diego County. you got the Marine Base, and you got San Diego County. But... Being as far south as I am, and you've got probably 10, 12 miles left of uh, Orange County before it turns into San Diego, I can still see two container ships way out here, okay, that have probably your uh, Halloween stuff out there. So share your thoughts and all this stuff, guys. I really want to know what you think. But uh, again, you know, should we, the, the student loan debt, should it be forgiven? No, no, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people out there are struggling with this, but during this time when you didn't have to make a payment, I know people that made their payments and got stuff paid off during this time and used it because they didn't pay any interest. So for that, you know, they should get a medal, right? Or a refund. Share your thoughts. I'm going to end this video with these last few stories. And first thing first, uh, restaurant chains around the world have been hurt tremendously. Uh, in Quebec, Canada, I was sent a story where they're shutting down all the Taco Bells in Quebec. All nine of them are done. So you got to make a run for the border, okay? So Taco Bell's finished. You're going to see that uh, more and more. You're going to see more and more bankruptcies this first quarter and people closing the doors. They're gonna blame it on labor, they're gonna blame it on shortages, they're gonna blame it on a little bit of everything. Now, here's the next thing. Mike, a subscriber, sent me a great story about uh, his daughter going to college and having to make, you know, trying to get uh, uh, furniture for her and things like that. And he went to get a sofa from one of the local uh, furniture companies and they told him the wait was nine months to get a sofa. There's delays from Vietnam, lumber, fabric, the boat, la, 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 there was a fire in Texas, okay? But here's the thing, they told him nine months, nine months to get a sofa, okay? No, pass. Um, the other thing is that Ashley Furniture, he, they were, he was told that they had uh, uh, 
uh, furniture that fell off a boat and that these people that have been waiting nine months are gonna have to wait an additional nine months. That's tragic, okay? And the final thing is Mike got into a car accident and had to get his car fixed. Took it to the dealership to get fixed and they told him it would be a month to get parts for the car. And that he was told that the local Chevy dealership had basically 11 cars to sell. That's it. The local Ford dealership is selling more used F-150s than they are new cars and that they can't get inventory and they have less than a dozen cars over there as well. So again, I always appreciate these stories and they're awesome and they're all real life and they're all real experiences. But what is the government and our leaders doing to fix this stuff? Okay, it's a quiz. Okay, answer it. Okay, I know the answer and you know the answer too and it's nothing. They're doing nothing to fix things like this. So share your thoughts and all this stuff and please do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, share it with everybody you've ever met, ever. The girl in kindergarten that was cute with the pigtails, send it to her, okay? <sighs> okay, everybody else too. Girl in high school that would never speak to you, that one too, send it to her. Um, we've got a Patreon channel if you'd like more access to me. Um, onward and upward, guys. Make good choices. I will see you guys very soon.